Hi, everybody. Aloha. This meeting is being recorded, too. I am super stoked to see so many of you here after many weeks of me taking a little break. Um, I just want to start off by welcoming all new people and all of our regulars back onto the show for another incredible dose of positivity. And this is going to be a super heartwarming episode, super informative Um Showing up here today is is no surprise. It's karma. It's energy that you're here to meet Zara Sita, who is an incredible healer. And before we get started, as more people are coming into the show, I want to encourage everybody who's new to the show, go ahead and pop your email in there with your name if you want to get a copy of the replay and know, um, be part of further uh live broadcast. One of our future guests is actually on and I'll be introducing her at the end so you know who's on for next week and you won't want to miss that show either. But anyway, most of you know uh, who are on the show. I'm just recovering from having um, my ovaries and fallopian tubes taken out and I am cancer free. Um, never uh, really doubted that, but there's always that little thing where, wow, uh, they want to take it out because because there's a possibility and I am doing great. Um, I'm, first time I've ever had any kind of surgery like that, but it took a little while to heal, but that's what we're here to talk about today is healing. And while you're all here on the show, I want to also make a special loving announcement and do like just three minutes of just prayer. Tell who has been with me for four years, um, her son was in an accident and he is recovering now beautifully, but he's still in the hospital and he needs all the love and all the prayers. So I'm just going to invite all of you to take three deep inhalation breaths and then breathing out and sending love and light all the way to the Philippines to her beautiful 15 year old son named Gab. Thank you for doing this. This is a t great time of healing. Ooh. You guys, I'm getting goosebumps everywhere. I really want to thank all of you who participated with that gab. Hope you felt that you are loved and in our thoughts. So you guys, before we get like totally into this great conversation, just a few housekeeping rules. Um, stay on mute, but raise your hand. Um, we love when people come on the stage with your questions or your concerns or your insights on some of the topics we'll be touching upon. Might be kind of controversial and we want your feedback and your opinions and also your respect for this incredible guest, uh, Zara Sita. And before um, that also, I want to say um, how grateful I am for this time of giving. Um, we're going to pop in the link right now, all of um, Zara's information. So if you haven't already looked her up, and we're also going to be putting into the, the link into the chats on all our feeds, our latest um, blog, which is all about getting through the holidays. So you don't have to go through a healing crisis come January 1. Um, so please take a moment and, and, and download uh, those. And then, no further ado, I'm going to read one paragraph from my book, Living Like the Future Matters. If you don't need, know me, I'm Donna Maltz. I'm known to many as Mama Donna. I'm an author, a nature photographer, and a lover of life, and a businesswoman. And this is um, coming from a chapter called, um, and their chapter I call it Cycles, a restoration and called Planting Seeds for the Future. And um, it's coming from my book, Living Like the Future Matters, the Evolution of a Soil to Soul Entrepreneur. When the soil gets nourished like our souls, there is no need for artificial stimulation. It takes attention, not toxins, to heal depleted and distressed soils. Temporary relief from these toxins only masks the problems. Eventually, the substance wears off and are ineffective. 
It then takes stronger substance abuse to perform. These substances interfere with life and can even interfere with our ability to be productive, healthy, have productive, healthy offsprings. Addiction takes over life like an invasive species. Balance and nourishment are the keys to success in every sense of the word. We can learn much from nature. Humankind desperately needs restoration. For nature and people, returning to a former state takes time and attention. The time to heal is contingent on the level of damage. For example, restoring a tree can involve pruning dead and damaged parts often many times. Although it is difficult to restore a tree to its original state, if cared for, it will double, even triple in stature and be healthy and productive. Our self-worth can also get reset. We can again love, be open, and be free when we let go of what does not serve us. Like detoxing. Yeah. So thank you so much for listening to that. And with now, I'm going to introduce a short bio of Zara Sita, who is a passionate health enthusiast. She is a wellness and a life coach, a holistic detox expert, which I can't wait to get into, a retreat facilitator and a writer with a professional background in traditional Chinese medicine, herbalism, nutrition, holistic detoxification, and neurofeedback, all of which, wow, that's huge. Zara also has spent many, spent many years studying with experience very, and in the various, I'm sorry, you guys, I am still getting over my, my whole deal. But Zara has also spent many years studying and experienced various indigenous uh, healing traditions from throughout the world. She helps many people with chronic and complex health issues find their way to better health, and that includes cancer. Zara heals herself from numerous health issues, including cancer, and uses her professional training and her personal experience to assist others. And uh, Zara, I am so excited to have you on the show. Um, I want to thank you so much for take, carving time out in your busy day and for sharing um, all you can share in this hour. So, um, and I want to invite everybody again, if you have questions, put them in the chat or raise your hand and we will bring you on the stage. And Zara, just first, before we dive into some really specific questions. Um, I, I wanted to ask you, uh, give us a little background, a little history of what brought you to this place in your life. Yeah, well, first of all, thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's quite an honor to be here. And, uh, you know, my what brought me here was my own health issues. I never really set out originally to be working in the healing arts. Uh, I actually grew up with a passion for the performing arts. And so a lot of my early years were in dance, in theater. I was on the stage a lot, um, later focusing mostly on dance. And in my early 20s, um, I started to have, well, actually it started a little before that. I would say even in my teens, I started to have some some issues, some some symptoms, nothing definitely diagnosed. And I just kind of pushed through a lot of that and just kept doing what I was doing until in my early 20s, I started to have a lot of symptoms coming up of things that were interfering with my ability to perform, to work. Um, and, and so I started seeking help and I started going down the route of, you know, going to diff different doctors and getting a lot of tests done. And uh, they couldn't figure out a lot of things. I was misdiagnosed. I was in some ways, I think, kind of experimented on because they couldn't really figure me out. And I was getting worse. I was getting a lot worse to the point where it was very uncomfortable and, and very difficult to, to function in my life. And so I started seeking alternative help. And I also started studying on my own a lot and using my body to, to teach me 
I started listening deeper and going deeper into my own intuition. And so between the help of different holistic practitioners like traditional Chinese medicine, herbalists, acupuncturists, also really paying attention to the things that were coming up and, and kind of tracking it. And then doing a lot of studying, I was able to unravel a lot of it and, and started healing and started feeling better and started transforming my own health. And it was quite a journey. It was actually many, many years. Um, and yet in the earlier parts of it, by the time I was, I guess, a few years after my original health stuff started taking a real big downturn, I then decided to go to school and to start learning things on my own. I was studying traditional Chinese medicine and a lot of the modalities that go with that, various forms of body work and acupuncture and herbs and dietary therapies. And even through that though, I was still healing myself. And for many years, I had a lot of different layers of, of things to go through. Um, some of them just to, to put out there, it wasn't all of them. I had uh, ovarian cysts. I had something called mast cell activation. I had issues with mold toxicity. Um, I had pretty serious chronic fatigue. My liver and kidneys were not functioning properly. I had systemic candida. I had hypersensitivity mm. to, to chemicals, different scents and smells, as well as foods. And I would have violent reactions to things to the point that I, I kept ending up like in the ER, I'd have seizures or I'd black out or I'd have, you know, pretty, pretty strong reactions. And so it was many years of working through those layers and uh, finding, finding healing along the way. And um, also then later discovered that I had something kind of running in the background called Epstein-Barr virus that was really, really taking a toll on my body and, and really kind of hijacking my immune system. It created a lot of autoimmune types of disorders within myself. Um, I also had hypothyroidism oh and, then cancer. <laughs> and then cancer on top of all that. And so, you know, it was many years of, of unraveling all that and working through those layers and, and finding my own healing. And so, yeah. Well, here, here's here's a question that's out of what we were going to talk about that just stirred so much in me is like, you know, a lot of people out there are are go experiencing the same thing, you know, uh, differential diagnosis, really not knowing what's going on or how to how, where to go, how to turn. And so they're turning to um, traditional pharmaceutical drugs. Um, they're they're surrendering their their human rights to the the pharmaceutical cartel and they're um, living on antidepressants. So how did you overcome that? I mean, like, that's just a huge uh, pile of shit right there. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a lot what, of the what kept you going, it. right? Um, that's a good question. I mean, really my own determination, my determination to feel well, to be healthy and uh, to really find my way out of the, the cobweb of tangled mess that I was in, really. I, you know, amazingly through it all, I had full faith in my ability to heal. And I had a lot of determination in my ability to heal. It was difficult at times, for sure. You know, I, I can't say I ever like went into depression or anything like that. But there were a lot of dark days, for sure. A lot of wondering if I was ever going to get through it all, or if I just had to adapt to <clears throat> living with some of these things. But I had a really strong intuition. And I had a lot of faith. And I had a lot of determination. And tell, so me I, about, tell me about your support system. Like, did you have a, a good support system around you that was supportive of what you're doing because I think a lot of people struggle with wanting to do kind of this stuff and then people are saying no you need to go see a shrink or you're not to, you know yeah not really honestly I didn't have a big support system around me um, when this all started happening I at that time I was living in Louisiana and I didn't mm -hmm. grow up in Louisiana so I didn't have any family there um I had, you know, I, I got married very young. I got married at 21 and, and my husband at that time was there, but I have to say he, he didn't know how to support me. It wasn't that, you know, he didn't care. He didn't really know how to support me. He didn't really understand. And so there was a strong feeling of being on my own. And uh, I had to, to really figure it out on my own a lot. And yet I will say because of that, because of that, it gave me it, it planted something within me. And I remember talking to God at one point and saying, you know, if I can just find my way through, if you can help me find my way through this and I can find healing and I can restore my health and rejuvenate myself, 
I will give my life to helping others. I will give my life to helping others through this and trying to create systems and trying to create programs and places where people can have some some more support. So in a sense, I also feel like it was a godsend in a way because mm -hmm. it planted a purpose within me to really be in service to others, to try and create ways for them to have that support, to not have to go through it alone, to not be just fumbling in the dark, so to speak, trying to find the way through. Thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate that because faith is so, so important, whether it's God, universe, or just knowing a higher power and feeling like, you know, kind of like making, making peace with that. Like, if you do this, I will, we're, we're not negotiating here, but, you know, realizing that sometimes that, that is the paradigm, paradigm shift, yeah. right? Just, I will say. I was going to say, I just want to add to the, um, the support thing, because all these, you know, it was a, pr a procession over time of what was happening. And so when I when I had my cancer diagnosis at that time, I did have a good support around me. And and I had people that were assisting me with certain things, the things that took up a lot of time, you know, like a lot of gr I, I grew a lot of things. I really created a lot of things for my own healing. So growing the wheatgrass and growing the various herbs and processing different things and making juices. I had, I had already at that point created uh, a place and, and we had interns coming there that were studying different things like herbalism and natural healing and permaculture. And so I got a lot of them on board helping me. <laughs> and so, and, and I had other, other friends that were, we were living in a community type setting who were supportive. I mean, a lot of it I, I did on my own, you know, that things that they couldn't help with, like the inner work, a lot of that inner work, but a lot of the physical needs at that time, I did have a lot of support, thankfully. But many of those years prior to that, as I was going through a lot of those other things, I didn't. I was I was pretty much completely on my own. Now, was this once you got to Costa Rica you're talking about? So yeah. but before before we jump to Costa Rica, because I think it's really important for the audience to know that part of your, your story, you know, because it leads into the next. But um, what year were you born without me asking how old you are? Um, no, I was born in 1975. Right. So that makes you 85, 95, 2005. How, <laughs> 48. How, old are you? how much? I'm 48. 48. You look like, you know, 30. Um, and so what year, what the, you guys, doesn't she look amazing? Say, yeah. Um, I, I knew you were somewhere around there because you had told me, but I forgot. Um, how, how, what age were you when you were, when this started happening to you? Um, this downhill. I was, I'd say the first part of it was probably when I was about 23, around 23, 22, 23, yeah. when, when I started having a lot of just strange symptoms. Um, it all started one night. I think the strongest started at a, a Thai food restaurant. <laughs> And yeah. I, I, something I was eating triggered something within me and, and I started, my head started spinning and the sound was coming in and out and my heart was racing. And then I passed out and I got brought to the hospital. Um, they still, they couldn't figure out anything wrong with me at that time. Um, I think it, it had a lot to do with the mold toxicity and some of the other things that were going on. And it just triggered a cascade of events in my body. And from that moment on, it was it was a whole different story for me where I became very reactionary to a lot of things. Um, and then shortly after that, I was getting um, pains down my leg and, and the circulation was getting cut off and a lot of nerve pain. And, and then it was discovered that I had these very large ovarian cysts that were pressing on nerves and cutting off the circulation. And and so it was that was the beginning. Those two things were kind of the beginning of a long series of, of other symptoms and other experiences for for quite a while. Well, that's interesting to hear. You know, I just had my two ovaries out and my tubes um, three weeks ago, not even around three weeks ago. So yeah. did, did you have the over, ovaries removed? No, they... I met with a doctor once they diagnosed me with that. That was one thing that they, they could diagnose. And they told me that I needed to have surgery and <clears throat> they suggested a full hysterectomy. And I was like, absolutely not. I, I plan to have children. I'm not going to do that. And then they were talking about other forms of surgery and they sat me down. <laughs> they sat me down and showed me a video of what that would be like. And something in me was just like, no, I'm not doing this. And I, I told him I'm not doing this. And they 
gave me a whole, I mean, at that time, a lot of the doctors were really hard and kind of trying to scare me is how it felt into things and telling me that there was no other way to heal this, that I was being foolish. It was going to get worse. It was going to cause all these other problems, but I just knew in my heart, it wasn't right for me at that time. And I walked out and uh, I went to a bookstore. And so, you know, this was before the internet really is what it is now. You know, it was, right. it was a lot of fun. and so I went to this bookstore and literally I was standing there and it was like this book fell off the shelf um, and it was called The Yeast Connection. And I picked it up and I started reading. It was naming a lot of the symptoms that I was dealing with. And I felt like, I don't know why that fell off the shelf, but I feel like that's God speaking to me. And so I'm going to get this book and I read it and it was a lot of it was talking about making dietary changes and different things. And so I started doing a lot of that and started feeling different changes. And that got me deeper into holistic detoxification and using herbs and kind of studying different things and getting acupuncture. And uh, within, I think about six months, the ovarian cysts were completely gone. And I, I've never had them since then. That's so awesome. Yeah, That's really, really great. Mine was a little different. I had a compound cyst and that, well, you know, what? I'm not going to get into that. But I, I, I feel so much better you know, I'm not a big fan of most Western medicine, but I gained a little bit more faith from from that because I really had to go really had to go through it because I'm super holistic. I have been since I'm 16 doing all this stuff and I'm 66. <laughs> but um, yeah, so so I, you know, I, I'm not saying to everybody because a lot of people listening to this, you know, really important to listen to what Zara has to say and also Really, I think the most important thing I hear you saying is listen to yourself. Yeah, everybody. I'm not, I'll say I'm that. not completely against conventional medicine at all. I'm not. There's a time and a place, and there are certain situations and certain medications and certain therapies that may be beneficial for the individual. Uh, you know, there definitely are. But for me, you know, I was just always listening to what was right for me and what worked for me, and so that was at that time what my inner inner voice was telling me. And so I just followed that. I, I think the biggest takeaway from this is for everyone to take responsibility for yourselves, for your health, go to the bookstore and, and, and let that book fall off the shelf. That's a metaphor. It's really, really important. Um, like I'm on zero medications, never have been, no need, right? So, um, but for some of us, there some of us are really struggling with certain things that they can't live without it. If you're type one diabetic or whatever, but right. Zara is here to share like some really interesting modalities of healing, and I want to go deep down into the tropical Costa Rican experience and mm. how you uh, elevated not only your health but your consciousness through that whole transformation. Yeah. Do you have any specific questions? Do you want me to just dive in? <laughs> I want you to just dive in because it's good. Dive yeah. in. Yeah. So um, my original journey to Costa Rica was just kind of an exploration. I had a friend who had been living in Costa Rica for about a year doing a study program. And when she came home, she had talked to me about it and she said, you know, I just, I know you love to travel. I love, I know you love to see new places. I think you would really, really love Costa Rica. And uh, my husband and I, at that time, we had a business that we were able to, to leave for a good amount of time. And we went for six months to Costa Rica, just as an exploration. And we fell in love with it. We absolutely fell in love with it and decided on that trip. We wanted to move there. And so we went back to the States at the end of that trip in with the idea in our mind that we were shortly going to be moving there. Some things happened. It wasn't, it wasn't in divine timing at that time. And so we, we kept that vision in that time. Um, I had, I had already had one child at that time during that time of, after we came back, I got pregnant and I had a second child. And uh, about a year after he was born, we decided to move back to Costa Rica, except for this time, we decided to go somewhere we'd never been. We had been on the Pacific side and on the Nicoya Peninsula. And this time we decided we were going to explore the Caribbean side. And so we went to the Southern Caribbean coast and we had no plans really of what we were going to do. We had sold our, sold everything basically and closed down our business and cashed everything out. And we were going there to live. And at that time, I, in the first couple months there, 
I met some people. I made a really amazing connection and I got invited to come and assist, um, be an assistant to somebody and help run, help run his project out in the middle of the rainforest in a, in a place called Punta Mona. It's a permaculture education center. Um, it's, it was off grid. You could only get there by either hiking a couple hours through the, the rainforest or taking a boat in. And so I, I was living and working there for um, almost two years with my children. Uh, in the first, I think it was second month of living there, my husband at that time left. And so he left and I had not, I didn't even see him for, for several years. And, and that, mm. so that was a big life change for me and um, just really surrendered into all of that and just really just started being passionate about learning. I learned so much in that time in that place about tropical medicines. I had a lot of mentors. I had a lot of teachers teaching me things, um, learning a lot about permaculture and sustainable agriculture and all kinds of things, all kinds of amazing things. And that the, the person who owns the place really opened the doors to a lot of amazing people. I, I really, really am grateful for him for introducing me and opening those doors to a big network of people throughout Costa Rica and beyond. And so from there, you know, it's just really over the years was was a beautiful adventure. I ended up living on the Caribbean side. Even when I left that place, I lived on the Caribbean side for a couple more years. Um, I, I just tended to really be gravitating towards projects where people were doing some really amazing things and, and was so blessed to come into those projects quite often when they were right at a transition and, and assisting people to see them to their next level all the while continuing to learning a lot, a lot of new things about um, different ways of healing, different plant medicines. Uh, and then I went over to the Pacific side. I was invited over there to help run a retreat program with a beautiful man over there and his team. And, and then I was invited to start attending some of these retreats where they were working with various indigenous leaders from uh, South America, working with various indigenous and traditional ways of healing. And so that really continues. Let's dive, let's dive into that. Let's dive into these traditional <laughs> yeah. ways of healing. And But before you do that, I wanted to just share with everybody, like, what was your health status? How old were you when this was happening? Was this 10 years after? Were you already feeling better? Were you cancer free at this time? Um, because you no, went on to help a really happened. I can actually happen while I was there. So um, let's see, I, I moved down to Costa Rica, I guess when I was 30, 29, 29. And then it was um, several years later that that I had cancer living on the, the Pacific side. My sense is I had cancer in my body already. It was just a it was just a matter of it coming out to my attention at the time when I was diagnosed with cancer. What kind and of cancer? Um, I had malignant melanoma. I had a, a tumor-based melanoma. And so I, I originally, it was on my face and can't really see it so well here, but I have a big scar here. So originally I had a surgery. I had a surgery to remove that and it came back in, in two separate places. And so that I went into a very, very deep, deep healing process to, to help heal myself after the surgery seemed to not really work. I, there was, I wasn't that educated on all the aspects of cancer as I am now such as things like the cancer stem cells, which can cause reoccurrences. And, and so once I started learning more about the science of it, I was able to really create a program and a protocol for myself that, that brought me the healing that I needed. Now, do you use that protocol when you're counseling other people or how, how do you, how do you guide someone? Cause you help a lot of people. Yeah. Have and I've continued. I mean, it's, it's, you know, since my own journey with cancer, I, I continue to really, really learn a lot and make it a point to learn as much as I can. And I still do to this day, there's always things being discovered and myself discovering more and more. And so some of what I did, you know, has inspired where I am in, in my process now of helping people. But I've come to see that each case is unique. Each, mm -hmm. each type of cancer has some unique things. There's some similarities. There's some very basic things about cancer that are across the board, no matter what kind of cancer you have. 
And then, you know, different types of cancer, let's say it's a brain cancer, there's, there's, we have to figure out how to get across the blood brain barrier with certain things, you know, not everything does easily. Mm -hmm. And so how we're dealing with that can be different from someone, let's say they have a hormone driven cancer, such as a hormone driven breast cancer or prostate cancer. Well, the aspect of those hormones is different than somebody who's dealing with perhaps a kidney cancer, or bone cancer, or blood cancer. So they each have a little bit of differences. And so that's been a passion of mine also is trying to, to learn about those differences so I can better help the people as well as finding the things over time that I've seen to be the most effective and efficient for help helping them reach their goals. And then I meet with people one-on-one because everyone's going about it in a different way. And, you know, some people might be doing conventional treatments and what they're looking for is an integrative approach. And so sometimes we have to deal with some of the the complications or side effects or limitations of some of those conventional treatments to create the best integrative approach for them by adding in some of the holistic and alternative things where others are doing a completely holistic alternative approach. And so looking at that and, and, you know, working with them where they're at and some of them have other health issues, you know, on top of it that we're having to take into account and, you know, each case is very unique. And so that's, that's where I work with people is working them, working with them on a very one-on-one basis to find the, the ways that are going to help them in the unique ways that they are unique and that, that their health issues are unique. And so it's uh, and it's it's taken it up a notch because my background is in holistic health, but because I do work with so many people who are receiving conventional treatments, or perhaps they have other things, other health diagnosis they're dealing with. Perhaps they're taking medications. I've had to really study and learn a lot about conventional medicine and about conventional oncology and about prescription medications and conventional treatments and understanding them better, getting to know the contraindications and what they're doing and how they work in the body and, and all of that. So it's, it's definitely brought me to a different level than when I had cancer. You know, I, I I learned a lot in that time and I learned how to treat myself. I also was living in a country and that's different than where a lot of the people that I'm meeting with, I meet with people all over the world. I would say most of them I'm meeting with are in Europe are in Canada, or in the United States, and and sometimes in, you know, a lot of other places too. But I was also living in a very, very rural place at a time when there wasn't as much access to some of the alternative treatments. And so I had to work with what I had, where I was at, where a lot of people now, they have a lot of options. There's a lot of amazing, amazing stuff out there that they can have access to that can help them, that I can guide them to that I didn't have access to. So what I did, I can take a lot of that, but I, I'm at a very different place now in my knowledge and understanding and experience. And so if it was now with what I know now, I might do things a lot differently than what I did then for myself, just because of what I know and having access to different things. Yeah. You know, this is so interesting. Um, well, first of all, we all have cancer, right? We all have cancer cells, right? And like really what defines a cancer and really what is Epstein-Barr? It's like this, like, you know, term, you know, it's part of the differential diagnosis craziness, right? So it's 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 like getting back to like um, re- getting to know your own body and what feels good yeah. for you. Um, and, and if you, we don't take the time like you did, right, to, to explore that, you become at the mercy of something something else and then yeah. you don't become yourself and and i think that's really where i'm headed or we're headed with this conversation it's like people have to wake up and wise up and rise up and realize that they do have some um control control over what they're doing and like maybe like you said you maybe you would have done something different then if you knew what you knew now but look you're alive so whatever you did yeah. work for you and that's having that belief and having that faith and 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 i'm gonna um have tell i'm going to um, forward you this email there's there was this great um i don't know if you know dr isaacs eliza he did how to optimize your cancer healing journey uh, a summit and i I want to get um our listeners to that because we focused on that and you healed from cancer but this is a super alternative um it was an incredible uh web you know depth of information of all these different modalities from MDs, conventional to um, 
allopathic um, to homeopathic, every aspect of how to do it. And, and I think the most common thread of all of this and anything with dis-ease is that we have to have faith. We have to believe that we have the power within us to make Absolutely. these changes. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Um, yeah, that's a big, big part of what I, I really coach people on and help people with when I am helping them with the, the physical plan for their healing. I also mm -hmm. really, really focus a lot on the power of the mind and the power of faith and the power of prayer. And, and one thing I always encourage them is, you know, first of all, get really straight with yourself about where you want to be, what, where you want to see yourself and, and lift a prayer, lift a prayer for your healing and, and lift a prayer to, to get you to where you want to be and then create a vision of it and see yourself how you want to be, see yourself completely healed, happy, living the, the, the life that you want to be living. And every day, sustain that prayer, walk with that prayer, come back to that prayer, come back to that vision, see that vision, hold that vision, and keep at that every single day. And just just be willing to do whatever it takes to, to change your life, because it's not just what's going on in the body. You know, the body, the way I see it is, is a vehicle for our spirit and we got to take care of it. Just like we do our vehicles that we drive around and we got to put the right fuel in it. We got to, you know, flush the fluid sometimes the, the detoxification process, you know, just like we do with our vehicles and, and we got to take care of it in the right way. And yet we're more than that. And so we got to take care of the rest of it. We got to take care of our emotions and our relationships and, and our home is an extension of ourselves. So we got to create a, a very sacred sanctuary and a, a natural, healthy way to live in our homes. And, and so all of it and having, you know, I, I really believe that the more we can create um, a practice of faith, whatever that means to each person, but to walk in faith. And for me, it's really having a relationship with my creator and having faith that I'm, I'm being held and supported throughout my process. And, and so all of that brought together, as well as taking care of the body, to me is what I've seen is, is the, the best way to get through it. And I, I will say that my clients that really take that on, that really take it all on, they're bringing in the faith. They're, they're working on their mindset. They're getting rid of any programs that limit them or, or hold them back or tell them they can't do it and replacing that with, with a vision and, and with a mindset of positivity and success, as well as, you know, dealing with everything else. Like I said, the emotions, the relationships, the home, et cetera, they're the ones that tend to have the best success. The ones that are willing to change anything to get to where they want to be are the ones that really tend to overall get their in the best way and, and have the most long-term success. Yeah. You know, that's what I, we were talking about earlier about the support system, you know, and the fact that you were able to pull through without having all that, you know, you had two children, you, 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 your husband left. I mean, that, that's a lot, right. That's cancer right there. You know, and like really what defines cancer, you know, it's, uh, so um, I, and, and that you have this strong constitution and here you are helping thousands of people. And we're going to put in all the information how you can get onto Zara's website and also her um, Facebook group where and she's got incredible programs. And one of the things that I wanted to, to get into was your detoxing, um, like the daily detox. It just really like there's so much uh, chemical toxicity, um, which I'm dealing with right now is heavy metal toxicity environmental toxicities, mold, like you mentioned, fungus. Um, so what can, uh, like, like, let's be proactive for everybody who's listening to this or to the replay. What can people do for themselves right now, today, to make a difference in their lives? Because, so that cancer doesn't have a breeding ground, right? Yeah. So what can people do right now? to detox on a daily level and to strengthen their immune system so they can uh, be fortified if something does occur. Yeah. So I'll just, let's start with detoxification because I think that's an important thing for everybody because we do, we live in a different world than it was 20 years ago, 50 years mm -hmm. ago, hundred years ago. There is a lot more pollution. There are a lot of things coming at us from, like you mentioned, heavy metals, environmental pollution, 
various chemicals, uh, electromagnetic frequencies, radiation, et cetera. And so, like I mentioned, the vehicles, you know, we, we understand most of us who own vehicles, we understand one, we got to put the right fuel in it for it to run well. You can't just pour Coca-Cola in the gas tank and think it's going to get anywhere or, or run very long. It's not. And we also know that, you know, it's it's really good to take the vehicle in and get some oil changes and, and fluid flushes and change the filters. And otherwise, it gets gunked up. You can let it, you can take it for a while without doing that, but it's not going to be optimal in its, in its health. It's not going to run as long and it's not going to last as long. It's not going to run as well. And so it's the same with the human body. And, and from what I've studied and learned from all over the world in, in various indigenous and traditional cultures, there is a history of detoxification. It was a way of life, whether that be fasting whether that be, you know, in, in some of the Native American traditions, the, the sweat lodge ceremonies to sweat it out, you know, different, um, different cultures would do things like eating clay, which absorbs toxins. There were thermal pools that are high in sulfur that they would sit in that were detoxifying their bodies. So this isn't something new, but we are at a time where the level of um, what's coming at us is, is stronger. It's different. It's a different world now, like I said. And so there are a lot of things we can do. I am a big fan of fasting, whether that's intermittent fasting, you know, skipping one meal a day, so to speak, or skipping a day of fast or a day of eating here and there, doing a three day fast, doing juice fasting, things like that. It gives our body a chance to, to do what it can do. I, I truly believe that God created us with this design, this very divine design to regenerate and rejuvenate. And we just got to give it the right environment and, and the right support for that to happen. So when we're fasting, you know, there's various things happening where our body is eliminating toxins and it's rejuvenating stem cells, healthy stem cells and rejuvenating our immune system. So that's one thing I really, really encourage people is to, to learn about fasting. It's, it's a beautiful way to support your body and do some gentle detoxification. And then there's a lot of other things that are out there. There's an article on my blog that explains how to do several simple gentle detox therapies that are very inexpensive that you can do at home, that you can do on a regular basis, such as making a detox bath. A very basic detox bath is, you know, using Epsom salts and baking soda. And there's other things you can put in there, but these two things help initiate a detoxification process in the body that is painless. It's very gentle, very simple, but it really cleans the, the, the body out in a good way. Um, saunas are a wonderful way. I know a lot of people are into saunas, especially the infrared saunas are, are getting a, a lot more popular. That's a really a, another wonderful way that people can use detoxification therapies. Um, you know, just drinking juices for a day or for several days is another thing that really flushes our lymphatic system and, and helps heal down to the cellular level. And, you know, there's a lot of other things, even just doing certain breath techniques from the yoga traditions, uh, pranayama exercises, things like that can help with detoxifying the body. And so whatever it is, there's many things people can do that are, are very simple and easy. And like I said, on my blog, there's that article and a few other articles that talk about some easy ways to help detox your body. And then there's the thing like my full body cleanse, which is uh, a three week program that works a little bit different. It's cleaning the blood. It works on, you know, removing some heavy metals, killing some parasites. It works on cleaning the digestive tract and the intestinal tract, the colon, and it works on cleaning out the liver and the gallbladder, the kidneys and the lymphatic system. So it's going through the layers and doing a deep cleaning. And that's something I encourage people to do at least once a year, maybe more than that, if, if they need it. And just taking care of these, these vehicles, so to speak, that, that our, our spirits are getting around in. Oh, this was so helpful. And I'm sure Tell's putting in the link to that detox three-week program. I think that's really important. Um, and do, just doing daily detox is one thing you didn't mention that I've been doing and that I find is super healthy um, is castor oil packs on my Oh, yeah, that's, right that's in that article. Pack. That's in the article, the simple gentle detox therapies. And, yeah. you know, some things, you know, that are that even just exercising and, and getting out in nature, getting out in the sunshine, mm -hmm. breathing fresh air, you know, these types of things, getting, sitting on the ground, doing grounding and earthing, you know, all of these things are, and, and when we do that, when we do the grounding and earthing, it's cleaning the electromagnetics from around us. And it's, it's helping getting, getting us into a, a more healthy frequency that boosts our immune system and can relieve pain and many other things. So there's a lot of, I would say free detox and free health support right in nature. 
And, and that's something I really, really feel passionate about is that the more we get in nature, the easier we are, we easier it is for healing as well as uh, help support our, our mental health very well also. That's so awesome to hear you say that. Well, if, for, for all the people who don't know me, um, again, I'm Donna Maltz, known to Mama Donna, and my tagline, and we'll put our website right here in the chat, is the closer we get to nature, the closer we get to our true nature. Absolutely. And as I read in the beginning, um, I read a metaphor like that when the soil is healthy, it's like our gut microbiome, when it's healthy, we, we, we can heal. And um, one thing that really is, is, is striking home uh, from this conversation is that the fact that to get to the layers of the onion, we need to detox ourselves from propaganda. We need to detox ourselves from the, 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 the cartels out there, that the fact that the understanding that the pharmaceutical companies own the seed, they own the food manufacturing companies, and they basically own most people's minds because 50% of people are on at least four to 10 pharmaceutical drugs. Yeah. So, it's very um, we we and and like what I love about you is that you know you know you have this vision from God and you're like or what the universe and you're gonna come around and you're gonna you're gonna set set it straight and help people and we first we have to help ourselves obviously but yeah. we need to break that addiction and have that confidence in ourselves right to to just say enough is enough. And to take the best of the West and incorporate the East, the North, and the South, like our Native American and Indigenous people uh, have known. And I love this blog that you're talking about. I'm going to have to check it out myself because I've written a blog similar to that. It's like, yeah, there's these things. They're free. They're, our ancestors have been doing them for centuries, and now they're coming into vogue. And let's take advantage of these um, these incredible traditional healing things. And one thing you and I have talked about and that I'd love, we don't have that much time left. And if anybody wants to raise their hand or put in your uh, questions in the chat, now is the time to do it. But you, you and I were talking about, you know, uh, the different indigenous medicines, the different, the, the bofo frog, the bufo frog, and the, uh, uh, I forgot how to say it, the combo, the other frog, the extreme. I mean, let, let's take a deep, like, um, and, and look at these different, um, you know, a lot of people have heard of um, doing ayahuasca or some of these other psychedelic ways of detox and healing, but it seems to be something that you have found um, a great lot of success in this one particular, the combo one. And I'd yeah. love for you to share, share that with everyone because yeah. I find it fascinating. Yeah, it's a it's a very special one. Um, combo was introduced to me about I would say almost ten years ago, and uh, I'd done work with various different indigenous healing traditions. And someone that is a very very dear friend of mine, and I had heard of combo, but I I had never experienced it. And I'd experienced some of those other medicines and other other ceremonial traditions, and and also found a lot of healing for myself on on many levels with those. And I was curious about combo, but I wasn't really seeking it out. And he he brought it up to me and started talking to me about it. And he told me, you know, that he knew somebody that would be coming from South America that was going to bring this medicine and I'd have the opportunity to experience it and try it. And so I was I was open. I was interested. I was curious. And, and that's really just why I went to it, it was just curiosity is, is to learn about something new. And so I went and I did experience it. And I had a very profound experience through that. I thought I would just be coming and having um, a couple sessions with it. I ended up having a bunch of sessions <laughs> within a short period of time and started feeling some deep, deep changes within myself. And so combo comes from, from South America. It originated with a tribe in Brazil. And, you know, from that tribe, it got carried into other tribes and, and different ways of doing it have, have taken place. But traditionally, uh, this medicine is they, they get a secretion from the frog. And just so everyone knows, the frogs are not harmed. They are not killed. If it's done in the right way, that's that's the tradition of it. It's it's a very um, respectful way of getting this secretion. They actually sing to the frogs, and um, 
they they kind of massage them and it releases this secretion that they get from from them and then they dry it and the combo is not a hallucinogenic medicine at all it is a deep physical and energetic and spiritual detox and the the energetics and the spiritual side of it is a bit of the the mystery of all of it all you know that the indigenous people understand and in their own um you know, cosmovision and their way of, of explaining things, they, they have their way of explaining that. And so on the physical side, it has been studied. There are various peptides and alkaloids and things like that, that are, that are going into the body to create a physical change within the body. And so it's been shown to, you know, kill bacteria and fungus and parasites and cancer cells and to clean the liver and the gallbladder and the kidneys and the blood and, and really detox the body. And so that that medicine is given, it's not like, say, with ayahuasca or something in the Native American traditions with peyote or whatever those those, um, you know, eth ethnogens, they're, as they're called, or as we might say, hallucinogens, they're not taking you somewhere else, you know, and, it, and they're not also, or I mean, combo is not taking you somewhere else. It's something you're very present with. And it's also in those traditions, there's a ceremony, you know, that can last several hours and it's a journey that the person goes on and it's it's a lot about their their spiritual awareness and the changes that can happen and the physical as well there are physical things that happen with those medicines that that can be very healing for the person but it's 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 something that affects their consciousness in a different way where this is it's very powerful and it's it's spiritual in some ways, but it's not a ceremony like that. You're not sitting in a group of people with perhaps, you know, a shaman or someone else leading the ceremony. It's something that you have to be very present with and and be working with it. You're working with with what it's doing with you through that process. And it's a short process, 15, 20 minutes usually where you're sitting there with the combo and going through that process. And so when the medicine um it's it's put on the skin and as it enters the bloodstream there are various things that can be experienced um not everybody has the same experience for someone else um they might get a little woozy or dizzy another person might feel their heart race or they might get very hot they might get very flushed and and then there's a purging that happens where the things are released out of the body on a physical level and so it it does definitely clean the body very deeply and and through working with that medicine and having the opportunity to assist some very, very powerful and anointed people who are working with that medicine, I've been able to witness some profound healings, some very mm -hmm. profound healings from fertility issues, hormone issues, uh, schizophrenia, depression, addictions, cancers, all kinds of things that I've seen amazing, amazing healings with. Everyone has their own experience and their own process, but I have seen some very, what I would almost call miracles at times happen. And also it, it has this ability to start changing people in a way, changing their energetics and kind of the configuration within them that their outer life starts to change it, for the better. Things start to mm -hmm. fall away that weren't so healthy. It's it's easier for them to walk away from certain things, maybe a toxic relationship or an addictive tendency or a negative way of thinking or behaving, or maybe they just get inspired to start really eating better or exercising more. And it, it creates positive changes. I, I see it as like, it kind of comes and shakes things, shakes things up, you get out physically what needs to come out. And yet that shaking starts to happen throughout the rest of their life and kind of shakes away the things that are holding them back from their more optimal health that they're, they're striving for. This is so fascinating. Um, I, I have, I have someone who asked Angela asked a really good question and it comes back to the combo too, is how, how do you clean generational trauma is her question. And you kind of answered that there, like this might be, um, just the ticket for someone who is dealing with generational trauma. And I know some of these um, indigenous uh, ceremonies with the ayahuasca and stuff, um, and even the, the, the other frog medicine. Um, I've heard of people who really have broken through some of these brain barrier. There's this, this like, oh, I'm not going to do this. You know, I can't, you know, uh, this, and, and it's like, you, you have to question how do we, how do we come so, so far from 
these yeah. traditional native things. And there's just one, two things I want to say about that. Number one, I'm not saying everybody go out there and get yourself a combo, but I'm going to ask you in just a minute, where's the safest, best way for people to find that medicine? And two, I'm not also suggesting that we, you know, totally cut everything off, but we realize that there are these alternatives that have been, um, are, are waiting for us to explore. And I want to encourage everybody to follow up a czar or, or a, a healer who does some of these things in your local community where you can participate in uh, possibly a ceremony that will help clear generational trauma or any of these ripple things. You know, we're not sitting on our laurels. This is the 21st century people, and we have been duped long enough, and I'm, I'm, I'm kicking your ass here. So tell us about um, this combo um treatment and like we're like I, i'm here in hawaii we're, we're, if i wanted to do something like that it's not like everybody's squirting poop out of a frog's butt and i can go and do, do no. this nor uh, is kind of weird but um like where do we go where, yeah where do we go? and that's that's a good safe, question safe, and I, I really place. i really honestly i really pray to see more more access in good ways to it. Cause you know, there are a lot of people doing these things in really good ways. And then there's a lot of people who perhaps for various reasons are not doing it in good ways. Maybe they're doing it for ego or money or whatever. And, and they're not honoring the traditions and they're not really their, their greatest interest or service isn't always for the betterment of people, the other people. And so one thing I'd start with is to really be, Sure and clear that that's something that you're you're calling into your life and to really pray for it and to also, you know, if you know other people that are receiving these things and you've seen good changes in them, you've seen healing in them, talk to them because the best way is is to go through somebody else who's had a good experience to be brought into a circle where it is a good experience. The group that I work with, we do we do not do any marketing. We do not do any advertising. We, we don't seek out people to come. We invite people that we've met. And so it's a very um, one to one word of mouth type of thing through a trusted group. And you know, I if you really want to talk to me about it, and it's something you're really interested and curious about, um, I'm happy to answer questions, you can, you know, reach out to me through my website. Um, I do help with some of the retreats that we're doing in both North America, Central and South America. And so if anyone's really, really interested in that, we can bring you in and, and get you some more information. We don't put anything out online because we're really trying to protect it in a good way. And, and we want to, we, we don't want just anybody coming in. We want people with really sincere intentions for their healing and for changing things in their lives. So feel free to reach out to me if you really want to know more about the group I'm working with and, and what we're doing with that. And otherwise I'd also say, you know, just say the prayer. It's going to come to you. These medicines will come to you if they're right for you. And they might come to you in ways that you're not expecting. Um, there are, when I were, lived in, in Costa Rica, you know, there are a number of centers that facilitate and, and host these types of things. I used to help run one of those centers for, for a while where we brought in very trusted, very high level indigenous elders and leaders who were, you know, very came from their tradition and they're bringing it in a good way. And there are these types of places. Um, we're starting to see a little bit more of that happening in, happening in North America, and there's a lot more of it happening in Central and South America. And so, you know, there's a lot more information about that online if you're if you're looking to learn more. I'd start first and maybe looking up the different things, um, you know, start start studying a little bit more about what they're about and see if that really, really feels right for you and and then go to the next levels with that. And, and I want to just add to that. And then before, I just have a couple real quick announcements. And then I would like you to come on and answer one final question for me, honey. But I, I, I just, uh, I think, Till, I'm going to have you put in her, uh, Zara's links in there again. This is really great. And I also want to thank everybody and remind anybody who wants to get more information, see the replay Um Put your email, your name and your email in, in the link. And I also want to introduce you to our guest who's coming on December 7th, who is incredible. Her name is Christina Whitehawk. She's on, she's on right now. Christina, you can come off and say hi to everyone. Um, this woman is in her 80s and she has been doing healing work 
for uh, close to a century, in a long time. She's incredible. And she is also an author, uh, in addition to being a healer. And we're going to be talking about the holy of the broken and transmuting suffering stories into positivity, um, kind of like what we talk about here on A Dose of Positivity. How do we turn lemons into lemonade? How do we make each and every day and each and every situation, no matter how tragic it is, how can we turn that around and find the positive in, in it? How can we approach each day with a, a, an attitude of gratitude, which changes not only our lives, but everyone around us. And that's what a dose of positivity is about. So please make sure you put your uh, email and name in there. And you can also, we'll send you information how you can become part of our uh, our Facebook group. And also to a lot of the new people, you know, I've been going through major health crisis, uh, crises and feeling better all the time. And Zara's just been an incredible support around that. And I totally trust her judgment and her wisdom. So I really encourage you to, to reach out um, um, if you have any questions or further questions, I'm looking in the feed right now. The one about the trauma I thought was really interesting because um, I, I really think that a lot of people uh, are holding on to the BS and, and it, the sooner they we can detox that emotional uh, toxins, uh, the faster we can heal, heal the physical. But we're going to have to save that for another show because, uh, or you guys listen to the replays, tell, go ahead and put our YouTube channel in there or, or our website on the, the link to all the guest speakers we've had. Um, close to 100 incredible guests that I've had the honor and privilege to uh, interview on this show, A Dose of Positivity. And Zara, I just want to thank you, oh, kudos a million times for, for sharing your brilliance, your knowledge, for busting some of the barriers out there that uh, hold people back from healing. And I would love for you to just close us all out with some... You already gave us great ideas for detoxing, but what what things that in, in in you know projects that you're working on, right? Tell us a little about the projects you're working on moving forward, and and how to inspire others to do uh, the same to work on projects that are meaning to them. So let's hear about some projects you're working on moving forward and then leaving people with some positivity words to motivate them to take action on some of what you have shared here today. Yeah, thank you. Um, well, my passion is definitely in assisting people in their healing. And I have a, a a very strong belief that through healing our lives and healing our bodies, healing our minds, healing our hearts, that it really initiates an awakening process in people, that it elevates our consciousness and it elevates our awareness and, and brings us into a, a deeper journey where we can come into our empowerment and into our purpose. And so, you know, I work one-on-one -on -one with a lot of people. I help work in different event settings, such as I mentioned some of the retreats and, you know, in, in the future, in the near future, I'm going to be expanding my network and working more on creating ways to access more people and, and to reach more people um, through various online courses and through various videos and through education and speaking. Um, I have some books that I'm working on, on writing and getting out there, um, continuing to expand my blog and, and really looking to expand my network. And I'm here now in uh, South Carolina with some people and working on, we've been having some discussions about how to take things to the next level and doing what I said, as far as reaching more people so we can really do more community projects with people, as well as reaching people all over the world through videos and through courses and through books and things like that. And so, um, you know, a big passion of mine is also to create wellness centers, healing centers, and bringing together all kinds of people from therapists and practitioners and doctors and, you know, indigenous elders and all these different things to, to help people access that inner healing and to elevate their consciousness as I'm talking about. And so I think big, I, I have a big heart for humanitarianism and reaching a lot of people. And I see, you know, building communities, building schools, building wellness centers, building systems to empower people and to help bring education and hope to, to more people. So that's, that's oh. a lot of where things are being directed, trying to expand that network and expand that reach so we can really reach more people and, and have people access more healing. 
You are one incredible human. And I, I just can't tell you how much I adore you and your passion and your womanism, you know, to just make a difference with your life and also taking care of your health at the same time. Cause it's that self care that's going to keep you going girlfriend. So I'm <laughs> going to be accountable for, I'm going to make you accountable to me that you are taking care of your beautiful soul. Cause you are so incredible. And I want to thank you so much. And then before we go to tell, put Christine's website in there. She just um, laid some really great wisdom out to, um, Angelina, who had that question about trauma, um, if you guys look in the chat, um, it'll give you, I, I can't see where it went, Christina, there, Angelina, when you heal, you heal the seven generations of the past and the seven generations of the future. And I know with all of your beautiful indigenous uh, work that you have been doing, you, if anybody's or understands exactly what Christina is talking about when she says that. Absolutely. So I want to thank you guys again so much. Everybody who came to the show today, um, really loving meeting some new people. Um, we are going to have a great time next week too. And then uh, I, I, I'm gonna. We're gonna sign off now because I am about ready to go to my healer. Um, every other week after the show, I go get a healing massage from a spiritual uh, woman who just does magnificent things to my body. And that was one of the detox things we didn't talk about is getting um, that body work done. So if anybody else um, has any other questions or want to come on the stage. Um, do so now. And then what I'm going to do in just a second is um, close out this show off the live. And then anybody who wants to stay on for another 10 minutes and visit with Zara one-on-one -on -one and uh, or just have a little discussion, we'll be off the live right now. I'm going to say, because I don't see any more questions because you answered them so beautiful, Zara. But big, big love and aloha.